Welcome back to PhD Clinicus. Today, I will share with you my experience as a PhD student. I will describe my PhD journey as an emotional roller coaster with ups and downs. For myself, it is still hard to believe that I have finished it. If you are currently struggling with your PhD, I hope my story will inspire you to keep going. If you are about to start your PhD, I hope my sharing can give you some ideas and know what to expect for the next 3-5 to five years. Let's start! I completed my undergraduate study in biotechnology in July 2016. I gave myself a few months break. After that, I was considering between getting a job and further study. If to get a job, I can work for the next 30-40 to 40 years till I retire. Why not give myself some challenges and do something different since I was still very young back then? Getting a PhD is hard, but I thought, well, should be okay, just another 3 to 5 years only. Why not? Most importantly, it sounds cool with the doctorate title. I just signed up. I started my PhD in November 2016. Before I continue, allow me to give a summary of my research work so that you can understand the following story better. In short, my project was to design and develop a nanomaterial known as gold nanoclusters for theranostic applications. Theranostics is a term to describe the combination of diagnostics and therapy in a single system or platform. This will be extremely useful in biomedical applications. This is the initial project idea. For my first year of PhD, mainly I performed different experiments, optimized synthesis of the gold nanoclusters, and performed characterization tests. Overall, things were running smoothly. Who said PhD is hard? It was just someone else's story, not going to be mine. I have good supervisors and colleagues. My project seems interesting and hopeful. The project progress was on track, etc. I was in a fantasy land. For my second year, I went to Spain for a year of lab attachment at ICN2 Barcelona. My task was to develop applications for the gold nanoclusters that I synthesized during my first year of PhD. For the first few months, I learned a lot of new knowledge and tried to put them on practical. I pushed myself to get as much work done as possible to have some publications. I worked on my experiments, analyzed the results, troubleshot, and planned the following steps. Honestly, I enjoyed doing my research project, especially the troubleshooting part. I guess that was the reason why I like research. However, I started to realize that my experiment results didn't come out as expected. The initial project ideas were not feasible. I gave myself a lot of pressure. I tried to read as much research articles and review papers because read more is always the so-called answer when you are lack of research ideas. I work until late at night, hoping to get some ideas on the project. I felt guilty to go out of town and travel during weekends. At the same time, I had two pending review papers. One was written during my first year and required a major revision. During that period, I had insomnia and couldn't sleep well. There was this night, I finally broke down. I woke up from my sleep, cried, shivered, and called my parents in Malaysia. I told them I couldn't continue anymore. I forgot what happened next. I voiced my concern to the supervisor. Since then, our relationship has started to become bitter. My research progress was not up to expectations. I submitted progress reports to my supervisor, more frequency of once a month to every week. That was the story of the first six months. After that, things changed, in a good way. I collaborated with a new colleague from Poland. Her name is Ola. We work on a new project. The project was electrochemical based, which was different from my background. It was something novel and exciting. I fell in love with the project. Despite the projects require a lot of optimizations, we learned together and work very well on the project. That was the time I felt my passion for research again. I started to enjoy my life as well. I planned trips around Spain and different countries. Of course, I worked hard before the trips to free my mind and enjoy the vacations. I had a wonderful Christmas in 2018 with Ola and her family. 
I guess traveling was the best things that I have made during that one year. I'm very relieved that I practice a work-life balance lifestyle. Experimental studies are temporal, but travel memories are long-lasting. If you ask me, how was the project? Although it was not a completed work due to unforeseen circumstances including equipment breakdown, I do not have any regrets because I know I had tried my best. I've learned a lot. I started to look at things differently. That's more than enough. My second year of PhD was great. It was eye-opening, priceless and rewarding. My third year of PhD was filled with negative vibes and frustrations most of the time. I didn't know my research objective. What I was told was just try everything first. Research objectives and thesis can be discussed later. I didn't know how I can graduate. I was just so lost. I saw my friends were graduating, had many publications on hand, and I had zero publication. Not to mention the compulsory weekly meeting and progress report, which got on my nerve every time. The low self-esteem was real. There was this one day, one of my mistakes in the lab finally brought me and my supervisor to a serious meeting, which I would never forget in my life. I kept myself calm and polite during the meeting. Right after that meeting, I had an emotional outburst. I felt so weak and humiliated. At the same time, it was the moment I had a strong feeling to quit the PhD. I called my dad. I remember that my dad, someone who taught me never give up in my life, said that he perfectly understand my situation. He would respect whatever decision I made. I told him that I would give myself some time to think before I finalize my decision. I know myself very well. I'm the type of person that would make sure I do not leave any regrets in my life. So at that moment, what I had to do was to convince myself to quit. I did not see any reasons to continue this endless journey. I could not see the end. It was at the cost of my mental health. I was so close to quitting, so close. My family was so worried about me. They visited me from my hometown, which was far away. They brought me to consult different fortune tellers. I know it was funny, but I guess that's how Asian Chinese parents express their love to their kids. For one last confirmation, I decided to make an appointment with my previous project course supervisor during my undergraduate study. We worked together previously. She was the person who ignited my passion for research and decided to pursue my PhD. I felt the need to talk to her before I made the decision. After listening to my stories, she asked me a question. What was the reason that motivated me to come this far? I replied. It was the doctoral title. <laughs> she encouraged me to look at a final goal and continue the journey. She asked me to believe in myself, brace up, and walk towards the goal. She gave me the confidence that I can do it. Since then, I understand that the only person who can save me was myself only. I can't expect changes from anyone. The only thing I can change is myself. I no longer wait passively for a discussion on the project objective or the thesis plan. I choose to believe in my own effort. I had my thesis plan. It is important to understand that no research experiment is perfect. There is always room for improvement. I told myself I was not doing groundbreaking research. What I needed to was something that works for the sake of graduation. I no longer saw perfections in my research data. Instead of developing theranostic applications for my gold nano clusters, which I explained at the beginning, I work from biosensing applications. Biosensing is a small part of theranostics, but who cares? I started my self-salvation. I started to move forward, even though the step was small, but we stepped forward. I have to say, it was dumber if the experiment kept failing for the first few years. We will work at the end. My project was going well. At the same time, I kept a professional relationship with my supervisor. My perspective was changed completely. Life is always full of uncertainties. 
Due to pandemic in 2020, all laboratories were closed down for a few months. My research progress was slightly affected, but honestly, I didn't put myself so much pressure. I went with the flow. Long story short, I managed to finish my experiment, write and submit my thesis, and have my thesis defense or why wow within the timeline. I managed to publish one review paper and two research articles in Q1 journals with an average impact factor of 8.7. One of the reasons that I can complete writing my thesis in one to two months was the progress report that I had been asked to submit on a weekly or monthly basis. I officially passed my thesis defense in early March and graduated in early August 2021. And I realized my timeline, which around four years plus was standard for a PhD. It was unbelievable for me till today that I've earned the doctorate title. I did it! Always remember, PhD will not give up on anyone. Only people will give up on the PhD. I would like to use this opportunity to thank my family who have been very helpful and supportive throughout the journey. The friends I met in Spain also have supported me so much in my research and publications, both mentally and physically. We still stay connected and very grateful for them. I guess that's all for my sharing for this episode. Thank you for spending your time and watching till here. I hope you enjoyed the video. Please let us know if you have any topics you would like to hear our opinion or share our experience. We will be very happy to share with you more of our PhD experience, such as how to write a good thesis, how to prepare for thesis defense or whatever, how to publish in a good journal, etc. Please like and subscribe to our YouTube channel. Thank you!